Season 4 Reloaded is here and Warzone got a huge change to come along with it. I'm talking some stuff that goes down to the fundamentals and could change how Warzone plays out entirely. Today we're going to break down everything that changed here in this update, everything you need to know and be aware of. So as we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. How do you guys like in the updates so far? There's been some pretty big changes, so is there anything that stuck out to you? Anything that you don't quite like, but you do like? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts down below. As well, if you enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's aim for a thousand likes here on this video. Of course, if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We have so much stuff you do not want to miss here over the course of the coming days. As Season 4 Reloaded introduces us to a lot of new stuff here coming, so make sure you stick it here on the channel if you're new and interested in any of that. And finally, a big thank you to these legends on screen. We've used creator code ESPRESSO in the in-game shop. Whether that be in Warzone, Cold War, or Modern Warfare, the option is there if you guys would like to support the channel a little further. It's entirely optional, but if you ever do decide to do so, tweet me a picture. I'd love to shout out some of your generous support in upcoming videos. That said, there is so much to talk about and so much to break down, so let's get right into it. Now, when I see that Warzone got the biggest update that it's had in at least a hot minute, I genuinely mean it. This update brought along with it some major changes to different features, different perks, things like that, but also to just the overall feel of the game itself, with a conscious effort to increase the TTK or time to kill across the board in Warzone for both BR and Plunder, affecting basically how every single weapon works within Warzone. Starting out with some of the stuff here introduced with the season, of course, we have that brand new mode of Pay load, that being the first ever objective based game mode that, like Call of Duty World War II's War Mode, you end up seeing two teams of 20 players trying to either escort a payload of ICBMs or stop it from being delivered, and it's just a basic tug of war back and forth. Blueprint Blitz will be introduced as a limited time event here throughout the season, similar to Double XP Weekends. When activated, this will end up allowing players to earn contraband contracts immediately spawning after their second contract completion, but this will end up giving you the ability to to get blueprints from prior seasons, Easter egg blueprints that are no longer available, and so on and so forth. So it's a great way to earn exclusive blueprint rewards that maybe you don't quite have in your inventory. So definitely take advantage of these throughout the coming weeks as they are activated. We have that brand new sentry gun that will spawn here as a result of red door control rooms. The gulag was changed here with its loadouts, not necessarily the format of the gulag, but the loadouts themselves. The specialist bonus token is now slightly more common in BR that you'll be able to see it potentially on a more regular basis here with this. Players will now drop their current equipment directly behind them when looting a loadout drop, which is phenomenal. That should, in theory, make for easier looting and picking back up items that you may have dropped that you necessarily didn't want whenever at that loadout drop. Now, the next step here is to hopefully evenly disperse different things like weapons or utility items whenever there's a large pool of loot on the ground, such as whenever you kill multiple enemies. A huge one is that the camera movement is no longer locked when sliding on a downward slope. That would be something that you couldn't actually move move up or down with your aim. You were just kind of locked at that zero degree mark at that immediate hip fire. So phenomenal to see that change. Dirt bikes added the updates for wheelies as intended. You could do it beforehand, but now you actually can do it on command. The red doors have been updated here, which we'll discuss a little bit further in a coming video on the channel, either later today or tomorrow at some point. We have new prestige items added with calling cards and emblems. And then starting some of the big transitions here within Warzone, we end up seeing the first of a couple of perks being introduced or changed over the course of the coming weeks here. This one, the Kill Chain perk, was adjusted with this update to allow players to have an increased chance to obtain all Warzone kill streaks from loot. Definitely an interesting perk addition here with this. It's not necessarily one of the most used perks, but may give you a little bit added benefit here if you decide to. But that Tier 2 perk category is about to be way more competitive now because that update was added today, but over the course of the coming weeks here, we'll end up seeing that even High Alert is being adjusted and amended as well, in which that will give you the ability to hear dead silent footsteps, which is finally a hard counter to dead silence, something that players have been asking for for quite some time. And it really makes this, again, a battle of competition on what you want to take, since you can't have something like a Lawbreaker from Cold War that allows you to have multiple Tier 2 perks. Instead, you have to choose between Ghost of staying off the radar here with this, High Alert to give you that visual ping of when somebody's looking at you, plus now also the ability coming soon to hear dead silent footsteps, then things like Restalker in there as well to get your lethals and tacticals back. But then also coming along with that update to high alert, we will see two unannounced perks coming as well within Warzone that are Warzone exclusive. So this does not mean they're going to make their way over into Modern Warfare. In 
instead they only affect Warzone. Now those, there's no details given here for this, but I'm incredibly interested to see what this actually is because I can't quite think of anything off the top of my head that I would immediately be like, okay, that's definitely needed within Warzone or something that's glaringly missing from Warzone by comparison to other Call of Duty experiences. Oh, and also associated with that little subsection of text from Raven, they also confirmed we'll be seeing a brand new weapon here coming to Warzone and one that is stated that we have been waiting for. My guess being the CX-9 here at this since it was shown off in that pre-briefing by Treyarch as of earlier today, but right now it's not actually in game. So whether that comes within the next 24 hours, it was meant to go live already, but didn't quite make it yet. Or if it's actually gonna be held off here in the next couple of days, we'll have to wait and see, but looks to be coming sometime soon. But also with the OTS-9 introduced here with this update as well, very curious to see how this meta will change, if at all, with these new SMGs and if they'll become some new favorites here, but time will tell over the course of the next day or two here as we start to get a better feel for these weapons. But talking weaponry, there were some substantial changes made to Warzone in the sense that Raven's push for a higher TTK or higher time to kill is actually now in effect here at this. We ended up seeing a vast majority of the weapons change in which this will definitely feel noticeable when you go into gunfights. You'll have a little bit more time to react before actually dying, and it is something that, while not too drastic, it is a change that is definitely worth mentioning here to the overall flow of Warzone. Now, there are a lot of changes here for these weapons, so to spare you guys the monotony of just listing off headshot and damage multipliers like crazy, we'll talk about these a little bit more in general terms, but also put these statistical numbers up on screen for you guys to check out. The AK-47 from Cold War ended up getting a decrease for the headshot and upper torso multipliers, which is where this weapon excelled, so it's definitely going to be noticeable as well, while the AK-47 from Modern Warfare actually had a slight decrease in the upper torso multiplier. The C-58 had a decrease to the headshot upper torso and lower torso multipliers while also increasing the range but also increasing the maximum damage range. So an interesting one there as well. The AMAX actually got a slight buff for those that are accurate as the headshot multiplier got increased ever so slightly and the upper torso multiplier was decreased. The FAL or Assault Rifle Bravo ended up having a decrease for the headshot multiplier and upper torso so, while the Farah had a maximum damage decrease and recoil increase as well, to kind of knock that off target of being just a laser pointer. The FFAR ended up having a decrease in the headshot multiplier, as well as a decrease to the maximum damage and minimum damage, while also increasing the maximum damage range though, and an increase to the multiplier on the neck. The Modern Warfare Scar ended up getting a slight decrease to the upper torso multiplier, while the Growl ended up getting a minimum damage increase. The Groza from Black Ops Cold War had a maximum damage decrease, but a maximum damage range range increase. The headshot multiplier, upper torso multiplier, and lower torso multiplier were all decreased, while there was a slight smoothing effect to the recoil pattern. The Krig 6 had an increase in the minimum damage. The M13 from Modern Warfare had a minimum damage increase as well, while the Modern Warfare M4A1 had a maximum damage decrease, while also a minimum damage increase, kind of bringing it more so in line with each other. The Odin from Modern Warfare had a decrease in the upper torso multiplier, with the QBZ from Black Ops Cold War having a minimum damage increase, while also reductions in the base movement speed and ADS move speed, but increases to the upper torso and lower torso multipliers. The Ram 7 from Modern Warfare had a decrease in the maximum damage range. The XM4 ended up having a decrease in maximum damage and minimum damage, while also having an ADS speed decrease slightly and a recoil increase slightly. The M60 from Black Ops Cold War had a maximum damage increase, while also an increase to the headshot multiplier ever so slightly. The MG34 had a decrease in the maximum and minimum damage, with the headshot and and upper torso multipliers both being decreased as well. The MG82 had an ADS speed decrease slightly, while the PKM from Modern Warfare had a maximum damage increase, while also applying a maximum damage range decrease, along with an upper torso multiplier decrease. The SA87 ended up having a multiplier of the upper torso decrease, while the Stoner 63 ended up having a maximum damage decrease, as well as an upper torso multiplier decrease. The Swiss K31 had an ADS animation update, as well now shares the base reticle as the ZRG 20 mil. For SMGs, we had the AK-74U from Cold War see a maximum and minimum damage decrease with the headshot 
not multiplier decreased, but upper torso multiplier increased ever so slightly and a slight bullet velocity increase. The AUG from Modern Warfare had a minimum damage increase and headshot multiplier decrease, while the Bullfrog from Black Ops Cold War had a decrease to the maximum damage and headshot multiplier, but increases to the left and right upper arm multipliers, as well as left and right upper leg multipliers. The KSP from Black Ops Cold War had a multiplier for the headshot decrease, and the LC-10 ended up having a maximum damage decrease, minimum damage decrease, and headshot multiplier decrease. The MAC-10 ended up having a decrease in the maximum damage and minimum damage, while the Milano also had a slight recoil increase, but decreases to the maximum damage, headshot, and upper and lower torso multipliers. The Cold War MP5 saw a decrease to the maximum and minimum damages, while the nail gun also saw a decrease in the maximum damage headshot multiplier and upper torso multiplier. The Bison from Modern Warfare saw decreases to the maximum and minimum damage, while the PPSH saw a maximum damage decrease, and the ISO from Modern Warfare saw a minimum damage increase. The final two SMGs are that of the Uzi, which saw an increase in the minimum damage, and the Fennec, which saw a decrease to both the maximum and minimum damages. The final weapons actually adjusted here within Warzone were the AUG from Black Ops Cold War, which saw the headshot multiplier decreased, the CARV from Black Ops Cold War, again with a headshot multiplier decrease, and you guessed it, the M16 saw a headshot multiplier decrease. The only other weapon side changes were that of Black Ops Cold War sniper optics with four times or greater magnification, now state that they have optic glint, whereas some of them did not beforehand. Again, that is a ton of weapons changed here at this, but because it is in line with a sweeping across the board effort in increasing the TTK for Warzone weapons. So that again will hopefully give you a little bit more time to react, but also hopefully doesn't destroy the feel of these gunfights. So we'll have to see how this all ends up working out. Maybe it's something that if it's not liked, it is reverted back, but we'll see where things go from here. Other changes this update ended up making were some social menu tabs in the UI, some changes here with this there's now the option to select players via recent squad and recent lobby there are also new accessibility changes with text chat behavior changes as well as advanced text chat behavior plus new message sound alerts so some quality of life stuff and then an absolute boatload of bug fixes that we can scroll through here to save you guys again the monotony of just listing off these 45 to 50 changes that are very minuscule in terms of probably how many players have encountered this but changes that definitely needed to be fixed no less outside of that of course you end up having all of the things introduced into Black Ops Cold War with the new update for the Season 4 Reloaded content. So, a new map, new weapons like we talked about here, Zombies map introduced as well. Some stuff on that side, but we also end up seeing, as always, some of the stuff we haven't talked about just yet is those new shop items introduced. Now, we do have those featured items introduced with this week, but also we also have a couple of things introduced on the franchise shop side of things, in which we have a CDL Team Supporter Pack, which is player signatures with various calling cards, emblems, and stickers, and it's the first bundle of its kind to receive an update to the contents, where in season, 10 new stickers will be added to the bundle. Personally, that's not for me. I don't really care about that kind of stuff, but we also end up seeing the Special Ops Pro Pack, something that was meant to be coming here as of this update. It hasn't quite made it into the game just yet, so I'm assuming it's going to be coming in the next day or so maybe later on in the week or something like that, but it's going to include a legendary Port Nova skin, two blueprints, one for the Fara, one for the AK-74U, and a couple of other smaller things as well, but the interesting part is this is going to be available for $20, not actually COD points, but the twist is that you also get 2,400 COD points on top of those items as well, so the way you break it down, one of those items is essentially free. You either get the skins for free where you're buying the COD points for $20, or you end up getting the COD points because you're buying those skins and blueprints for the $20. So whatever way you spin it, you get more bang for your buck here at this one, which is definitely interesting. Kind of two birds with one stone here at this. But the only other items introduced in the shop here as of this week end up coming down to the inside job bundle as well as the tanker bundle in the featured section. The inside job actually ends up coming along with the undercover agent OTS-9, which comes equipped with the GRU suppressor, the reinforced barrel, wire stock, 40 round fast mag, and the GRU elastic wrap, which if you don't want to rank this up or go through the challenge of unlocking it just yet and you want to play around with it immediately that's actually a really good build for the weapon but it also comes along with a couple of other things like a charm operator finishing move emblem and sticker all for 1200 cod points in the grand scheme of things that's actually not the most expensive weapon bundle we've seen thus far so not really a half bad purchase if you ask me i think i'm going to pick that one up level it up a little bit while also unlocking it at its base but we end up 
also seeing the tanker, which comes along with the cannonball, bulldozer skin, the steel shredder, XM4, and the steel trap MG, along with a couple of other items for 2,000 COD points. That one, not so much really interesting to me, but that's the shop items here available this week and with the update here for Season 4 Reloaded. If you guys are interested in picking up any of these and you'd like to support the channel a little further, you can use creator code ESPRESSO in the support of creator functionality in Modern Warfare, Warzone, or in Cold War, wherever you want to pick these up. Of course, that's entirely optional, but if you'd like to support the channel a little further, feel free to tweet me a picture if you ever do so. I'd love to shout out some of your generous support in upcoming videos. But that is the update here in a nutshell for Warzone, as well as Cold War and the mid-season update that came along as of tonight. So that said, that is where we're going to wrap it up. I would love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of this here? Are you liking what we've seen so far out of this update? Are you hoping to see some more stuff added in? Are you looking forward to that new weapon that will be coming of likely the CX-9? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. So I'm going to single targeting all things Warzone, Cold War, Modern Warfare, you name it. We got you covered here on the channel. We have a lot of stuff to go over still here out of this. So make sure you stick it here on the channel so you don't miss a single thing. If you also want to follow me from Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get comments out of YouTube. Practice on both those. So if you guys are a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. But said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.